Hey guys, this is JB3, and we are back with another episode of FIFA 19 Career Mode Youth Edition featuring Morecambe FC. And in this episode, we will send our scouts back out to start the month of June. We'll take a look at the squad report, we'll look at the stats from the season, and then we'll get into look at some of the other competitions that happen around the world, and then we'll move into the offseason, see if we can improve our team here with some transfers, with some training, and get ready for next year and the Champions League. So we'll send our scouts back out. It will be Scotland, Finland, and Norway for three months. So we will do a squad report. It will be Awazi up to to 92, one of the world's best. Hanyan Mun up to an 89 with a plus five. Stefan Sarek a plus three up to 89. Miro plus three to an 88. Lacante plus two to an 88. Lacero plus five to an 87 with potential to be special still. Billy Hughes plus two up to an 87. Adebola plus two up to an 86. Dupont plus three up to an 85 with potential to be special. Kumi plus three to an 84. Aldaharni plus two to 84. Vigara, an exciting prospect, plus two up to 83. Fuentes plus two to an 83. Burns plus three to an 82, Durson plus three to an 81, Zayatev plus four to an 80, Romano plus one to an 80, Lekanin plus three to an 80, Magnuson plus one to 79, Aguero plus four to 79, and has potential to be special, Lewis Ross plus three to 79, an exciting prospect, O'Grady plus three to a 78, an exciting prospect, Jessen, an exciting prospect, plus three to 77, It'll be Cortez plus two to 75, Carici plus five to 75, Cohen Michaels potential to be special plus five to 74, Niejo plus three to 74 showing great potential, Sarne on loan goes up four at Burnley, and Lopez plus four up to a 74 with potential to be special, really good season for him offensively, Donahue Plus 9 to a 74. We gave him a lot of training just to get him into the squad. Potential to be special. Vogel on loan, plus 3. Aguera on loan, plus 5, up to a 73. Clausen, plus 3 to a 72. Wide check. Why wide, wide check? I'm going to go with the wide check. Or the Polish goalkeeper on loan, plus 3 to 72. Johansson, plus 5 to a 71. An exciting prospect. Orellana showing great potential, plus 4 up to a 71. Sean Baker, plus 3, an exciting prospect. Udom, plus 5 to 69, has potential to be special. Dogo Mezu on the loan at LAFC, plus 4 up to a 69. Alterius uh, Exelos, plus 3 up to a 69. Matt Lowe, plus 2 to a 68, potential to be special. We haven't seen him yet. Cole Hennessy, plus 5, up to a 68, potential to be special. Park, with no potential, still sitting at a 65. Ramsey, plus 4, up to a 63, potential to be special. Nowak, plus 1, up to a 63, has potential to be special. And Mateo Luna, 60 overall, plus 7, after his alone spell for this season. And that will do it for us here in the squad report. Also throw up here all of the potential to be specials, the exciting prospects, and everything else that we have for our ratings so you guys can kind of get an idea or a better look at some of the players where they stand potential ratings or where they were when they were you know a bit younger as we lose those potential ratings we want to keep an eye on where everyone was so you can see those here and that will do it for the squad report so we'll look at the top scorers in the league. It's Kane winning the Golden Boot on 20 goals. Jesus right behind him with 18, along with Marcus Rashford on 18 as well. Only 32 matches. That's unbelievable that he only played that much. Must have had an injury of some sort. We'll see if we have any players here. We do have Munn, who has 12 goals this season on 23 matches unbelievable if we you know maybe played him a bit more you know but we had the european league to uh, the europa league to worry about we have sarik who's at an 11 as well and that will do it for our team here on the scores we'll also take a list at the assist man it's dupont with a 12 mun with a 10 aldeharney with an 8 sarik a 7 
And we have Durson, who had six and only 12 matches. No wonder he's asking for more playing time here. We have Burns with five and 14. So two of the backups actually had a ton of assists, and that'll do it for us here in the assists. No one else. Ederson will be the goalkeeper of the year as Awazi doesn't even... Where? Where is Awazi? Did he have a clean sheet? Oh, there he is. <laughs> Missed him there. Ten clean sheets. Four off the pace from being in first place, but only 27 matches. We definitely rotated the squad quite a bit, especially coming down the stretch there. We, we already had the season locked up, and that will do it for the season stats in the league. So we'll take a look at our team stats. It's Mum leading the way, as we saw with 12 goals. Sarek right behind them with 11. And then we have Billy Hughes and DuPont on 9, so three players almost with double-digit goals. And we never really seem to have the, the dominating goal scorer who's going to win the golden boot. But we do have some players here, you know, all kind of spreading it around. We'll also take a look, look at the assist leaders. It's DuPont with 12, Munn with 10, Aldaharney with 8. So a lot of assists too. We also had probably 24 different goal scorers this year. So an unbelievable number. You know, really spreading around. We had, you know, no one really dominated in the appearance. Awazi with the most, along with Adebolo, with 27 appearances. So we were able to rotate the squad a lot. Everyone got in except for Matlo. No one even got in on the final day. M Michaels came in for the sub appearance and gets his second. But everyone else was right around five. So really happy with that. Everyone got a chance to play, you know, between the Cup squad and then also the Premier League and Europa League. Everyone really got in. We'll also throw up the career numbers here so you can take a look. Munn hits 30 overall goals. Sark sitting on 74. You know, might have an outside chance if he had a really good season to get to 100 goals in his Premier League. But probably total overall, if he added up all the competitions, he's probably close to it. Billy Hughes along with DuPont are 36 and 30 respectively. DuPont with 30 assists in only basically two seasons, so... Really good from him. Happy to see that. He's really holding up the ball. And if you look at Park, still dominating. He absolutely carried our team. So we never want to forget Lucas Park. 57 goals and 49 assists in his career here with Morkham FC. And that'll do it for the stats on our team. Now let's take a look at how everyone else did in the leagues. So we'll take a look at the Premier League. It's Morecambe FC running away with it on 90 points. And Manchester City, Chelsea, and Man U will all join us in Champions League. It will be Liverpool in eighth. So no, no real surprises here. Watford just avoids relegation. And Bournemouth was a little bit better than we originally thought. It'll be Huddersfield, Wolves, and West Ham headed to the Championship. Now let's go check out that Championship, see who might be coming up for next season. So it'll be Nottingham Forest running away with it on 102 points, but really pushed with Burnley there. 96 points, they easily get ahead. And we'll take a look at who might be dropping down. It'll be Sunderland back to League One. Portsmouth and Rotherham United joining them there. And let's see who might be coming up from League One to join the championship. It'll be Aston Villa and Wigham Athletic securing a spot here in the championship. Unbelievable that Aston Villa has fallen off that far. Also take a look here, see who might be... Oh, Oldham Athletic, Forest Green, all here in the League One. Nice couple plays there, you know, sparring DK's Youth Academy of Oldham Athletic. His former one with Forest Green. We have one with Pat Bank doing the one with Oldham Athletic. And we have Swindon Town... And Rochdale and Colchester are all headed back to League 2. Let's take a look, see who has there. It'll be South End and Crew Alexander moving up. And we'll take a look at who's last place here. Carlisle, Cambridge United, and Cutsy's Macclesfield Town. So we'll take a look at some of the cups here. It's Brighton of Albion beating out West Ham for the FA Cup. And we'll take a look at the Carabao Cup, see how what happened there. It will be Manchester United taking the victory over Fulham. And we'll take a look at the... Or we'll take a look at Champions League. Who, who, who we might have to really focus on against next year. It will be Manchester City beating out AC Milan. So that might be the team to, to look forward to next year as we try and win Champions League. We'll also take a look at what happened with Europa League. 
see what happened after we bounced out in the semi-finals. It was a frustrating one. We'll see if FIFA ever wants to load. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Here it is. It'll be Udinese who win it. So at least we lost to the winners. I guess that's, uh, you know, something we can hang our hat on. We didn't lose to, to someone that, you know, fell out. But that'll do it for competition. So let's move on to July and the transfer window. So we will look at our potential off-season preseason cup games. We'll look at the Invitational Cup in Saudi Arabia. It's the most money. It's the most difficult. We want to try and get our players the best competition they can. So let's get into this Invitational Cup. So before we start our season, let's take a look at some of the objections. The first one is sign two youth players to the senior team. In the same season, they were scouted. Play them in 10 matching, either as part of the starting 11 or coming on as a sub. So that, depending on who we can get, maybe we find some good players. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Grow two youth academies by 10 overall points and then play them in 10. That might be a little difficult just because it's hard to get anyone up by 10 unless you really focus on training them, which we probably won't. Sign one crew... One crucial first team player assigned to midfield. We will not be doing that because we don't sign players. Champions League, we want to reach the finals. That is the goal of priority. Should be also winning it. So we'll take a look at that as we go. Premier League, win the title again. Emirates AFA Cup, win the cup. In financial, win within three seasons, increase the club worth by 30%. We'll probably be able to do that. We should be able to do most of these. But I think the goal should be, I think those are realistic. We should win the title again. We dominated last year and the players are only going to get better. And we want to reach the Champions League final here and win it. The, in the FA Cup, we want to win that too. So the ideal scenario would be win the quadruple. That'll be our objective for the season. If we can do it, it would be great and unbelievable. I think we have the depth to do it. So let's get into the season, see if we can improve the team and get that quadruple. So we have a transfer offer for Alexander Clausen, $4 million. I think that's a pretty fair offer for the midfielder. I don't think with Udom and with also Lopez really dominating that midfielder, I don't think he has a role here. We'll move him on here for $4.7 million. And we have our transfer budget. We will have a budget this year of $200 million. And since we don't have to do any transfers, these players' wages are going to be so high. I'm giving everyone the money if we have to. We're keeping everyone. We won't have to worry about that. Let's throw the money around. So we have a one-year offer for Karichi. We will reject that as we want him to stay at the club. He's got a lot of potential and is really coming on strong in that cup squad. So we'll get into the game against Al Nasser. It will be the backups rolling out here in the first game. And we win easily. Burns with the hat trick. Romano and Lekkonen both putting in goals and we take a 5-0 victory. And we have a transfer offer for Johan Vogel. We will accept this. His contract is expiring, so we'll accept that move him on. We still have Cohen Michaels and Matt Lowe and a ton of other goalkeepers, so let's see if we can move him on. So, unfortunately, Clausen's transfer offer has broken down, but we do have one here for Sean Baker. I just don't really like him. He's a bit too slow. He's 20 years of age, 71 overall. We have a lot of players coming up behind him, so we will accept this offer of $4.4 million. So, we have our second preseason game. It will be the backups going out again, and we'll see what they can do. 2-0 this time. Zaytev picking up an injury. Burns and Lekkonen both putting in the goals. So Schalke have come in for Kumi. His evaluation's up to 62 on the minimum, so $53 million. You know what we'll do is we will delegate this one, and if they want to pay 101, which is slightly over what he's worth, bare minimum we're going to ask for is 92. Let's see if they want to do that, if they're going to offer 52. So our last game of the group stages, we'll roll out the starters here and see what they can do. And they win easily 5-0, Billy Hughes with two, but unfortunately DuPont looks like he's picked up another injury, but Burns puts in another goal. So Baker's offer has broken down. We have our term tournament prize money 2.6, and unfortunately it looks like DuPont's picked up an injury and will be out for six weeks. 
So we have a couple offers here. One for Matt Lowe, 68 overall. The goalkeeper, I think we... I think we'll reject that. I think I want to keep him here for a, like a third cup squad for the young boys coming in. We have Cortez looking at an, a loan offer for Crystal Palace. And I think, I think he, ah. you know what? I'll accept that and see if he goes out. I think we have a lot of depth there and oh, I wouldn't mind getting him some more experience. And then we have a transfer offer for Brighton Hove Albion, which we will accept here for Vogel and see if he can come to terms. So we'll get into our first knockout game against Leipzig. It'll be Jessen coming in for DuPont with the injury, and we win going away with it. But Jessen picks up an injury in this offseason, not going well as we pick up the victory 4-0. So Jessen will only be out for five days, so we're lucky there to avoid any type of long-term injury. We pick up an additional $3 million, and then we have Jessen with an offer, though, $16 million they're coming in for him. He doesn't have great potential. We'll see what his evaluation is. $24 million. And unfortunately, I just... As much as I don't mind getting rid of him, I don't think we have anyone to replace him up top in the Cup squad. So we'll reject that one. As we still are waiting on some of those youth players to really become a lot better. We have Alda Harney, who we will reject as well. But he has an offer for $43 million from Hertha. So Cortez will be loaned out. It'll be Vogel with one offer down, but also accepts one, two, or four or five point six million dollars. So we'll see him out of the club as well. So we'll have our starters out again here in the Invitational Cup. They'll go out, see if we can get a victory here. And we do. Mira with the hat trick gets the three to two victory. So Schalke have obviously pulled out of the race for Kumi, and we do have a transfer offer for Nieho. He doesn't have a ton of potential, so I think I will accept this, see if we can move him on for $7.5 million. So Sean Baker has picked up another offer. We will accept that and see if we can move him out of the club. So the transfer offer once again for Baker has broken down. He really doesn't want to leave the club. Nieho has been sold for $7.5 million, so we'll see him out of the club. And then we have a transfer offer for Kumi and for Michaels, and I think we're going to reject both of those. 53 is too low. And then Michaels we really want to have in there for the Cup squad, maybe get him some run out as we lost Vogel. And then we still have Matt Lowe, so we, you know, we have some goalkeepers, but I think we want to hang on to Cohen Michaels. I think he's going to be a little bit better than Matt Lowe at this point. So we have our first month here in Scotland. We have two players we'll keep an eye on. Malcolm Walker, 72 to 94 potential. And then Reese Morrison, 69 to 93. It looks like he could be a cam or maybe a striker. We'll keep an eye on them for another month. So our first month in Finland has not brought back much. So we'll keep an eye on here. See if we can bring in any other players for the future. So we have Thomas Nygaard here in Norway, who looks like an absolute monster. $1.5 million. He will be coming into the squad right away. And then we have Thor, who has some potential, and we're honestly going to keep him just because of his name. So we have our Youth Academy here. It's getting pretty full, so we'll keep an eye on these players. It's due, but 91 to 94 finally hits 61. Osvaldo Cano, 84 to 90, 66 overall. Pereira, 65 overall. Sepla Vida, who just continues to not grow, but has good potential for us. David Taylor, unfortunately, has dropped off 77 to 85, so we will release him. It'll be Mario Palacios, 82 at 88. We'll drop him as well. Colin White, 80 to 94, the striker from Canada, 52 overall, though, might need some help. Pauletta, 84 to 94, 90, still decent potential, 63 overall. We have Esquierdo, 90 to 94, CDM, 66 overall, so we'll keep an eye on him as he becomes 18. We have Bustos, who's 57 overall, the left winger from Argentina, 83 to 93. And then we have Thomas Nygaard, who we just brought in, 67 overall. We'll wait for that potential just to make sure it is what we think it is, but definitely some great potential here in the player from Norway. And that'll do it for us here in the Youth Academy. 
So we have another transfer offer for Alexander Clausen, $6.6 million. We will accept that, see if we can move him on to Verona. And we have another loan offer for Matt Lowe for Ajax. I think I'll accept that. It's a good team. We'll move him on, see if he can get some experience. As Cohen Michaels will probably take over that youth squad role. So guys, that'll do it for us here in this episode. We finish up right before the FA Community Shield, and that's what we'll focus on when we come back. We actually have back-to-back -back games against Brighton Hove Albion because we'll start the season with them on Saturday. So hopefully we can put in a performance, dominate them in the Community Shield, win that trophy, and then we'll come in and start the season off on a good note, getting three points. So guys, that'll do it for us here in this episode. If you did enjoy it, make sure to drop it. Uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell. This way you can always know when the newest ones are coming out. If you have any suggestions for the series or thoughts that you want to make changes to to the squad, make sure to drop it down in the comments. And until next time, guys, have a good one.